The PGA Tour deal with Saudi-financed rival Liv may have ended years of costly litigation and the poaching of top stars. But at a hearing investigating the agreement, Senator said it came at a great cost. If this agreement ultimately succeeds, I have nothing to gain except a sense of pride that we help unite the game we love. Today's hearing is about much more than the game of golf. It's about how a brutal, repressive regime can buy influence, indeed even take over a cherished American institution to cleanse its public image. It's a regime that has reportedly killed journalists, jailed and tortured dissidents, fostered the war in Yemen, and supported other terrorist activities, including the 9-11 attack on our nation. We faced a real threat that Lilgolf, which is 100% financed by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, would become the leader of professional golf. The PGA Tour is, is it's really, it's not that big in terms of players. So if they take five players a year, in five years, yeah. they can gut us. The agreement provides clear, explicit, and permanent safeguards that ensure the tour will lead the decisions that shape our future and that we will have control over our operations, strategy, and continuity of our mission. And any funding what that is, they- What is the amount of the Saudi investment that is going to be made? That has not been determined yet, Senator. Has Blair, there been any discussion of what that amount will be? It would be, uh, there's been discussions, it would be a significant amount. North of what one, are the amounts north, that have been discussed? North of one billion. The court ruled unanimously that the NCAA, NCAA can't invoke their rules. And so they've completely screwed up college athletes. We used to be proud. Many of us love watching amateur athletes that weren't paid. Now everybody that plays basketball in, in college is going to be driving a Bentley or a Rolls. I mean, we're going to be seeing rap stars instead of basketball stars. I mean, this is crazy. But you know why it happened? Because Congress sat around and said, oh, well, because of antitrust, we can't let the NCAA do it. It went to the court, and the court made the ruling, unfortunately, a unanimous ruling based on the law. So the law's got to change. Antitrust shouldn't be involved with association. Until the creation of Live Golf, <clears throat> multiple golf tours throughout the world competed in a commercial marketplace dictated by the normal market force of profit and loss. Live is financed by an entity that was committed to competing for top players with little, if any, regard or expectation of a direct financial return. From a commercial standpoint, it's not a fair fight. And the PGA Tour accurately viewed that Live as an existential threat. Now, I have the deepest sympathy for the families of 9-11 and support their efforts of obtaining information currently being withheld by the U.S. and Saudi governments. And Mr. Chairman, as a quick aside, I was approached by some members of 9-11 families of the hall today, and they gave me a document that summarizes, uh, I guess, the, the FBI's investigation of Saudi involvement in 9-11. And unlike so many, or like so many documents that I receive, it's heavily redacted. The FBI, the United States government, the Saudi government is not being transparent with the 9-11 families. And I, I want to completely support the 9-11 families in obtaining transparency and the truth. So I, I'd like to enter this document into the record uh, so that people can view for themselves the lack of transparency of our government and the Saudi government. Without objection, and I might just say I have spoken to the 9-11 families about exactly this resistance by our own government, the FBI, and other agencies to provide the facts that are necessary for them to seek simple justice. And I would join you in a bipartisan effort to make those facts more and Hopefully that's a really good bipartisan result of, of this hearing. Uh, sports washing is also a legitimate issue. But no amount of money can wash away the stain of the brutal Khashoggi assassination and other human rights abuses. But it would be grossly unfair to expect the PGA Tour to bear the full burden of holding Saudi Arabia accountable. After all, anyone who drives a car or uses oil-based products has helped fill the coffers of the Saudi Public Investment Fund. Foreign investment in the U.S. is generally a good thing. And I'd rather have the Saudis reinvest their oil wealth in America as opposed to China or Russia. Also, if the kingdom's involvement in golf and other sports helps it to modernize and offer more rights to women, wouldn't that be a good thing? Although I believe there are many more pressing issues Congress and this subcommittee should be focusing on, 
Like many Americans, I have a great deal of interest in how this issue is resolved. Uh, Mr. Price, I just want to come back to the answers that you gave me regarding PGA Tour in China and make sure that I understand where this rests currently, what the current status is. So let's see if I've got the facts right. In, in 2018, the PGA Tour announced a 20-year agreement for a new entity called PGA Tour China Series. 20-year, 20 20-year 20 agreement. This is what your spokesperson said about it just as recently as last year, 2022. Quote, the PGA Tour established a separate entity based in Beijing, China. Continuing, the PGA Tour series China is owned and operated by the PGA Tour and supported by the General Administration of Sport of China, that's the Chinese government, and the China Golf Association. Now, you're telling me that this entity no longer exists? Senator, I would have to get the facts for you on PGA Tour of China. I can give Well, you, I thought you I, said to me just a little bit ago, I thought you said that it, it, you did one event in 2019 and it, it doesn't exist anymore. I, from, from an event standpoint, that series has not operated since 2019. Because of COVID. It, and it, it has not operated because of COVID, and we have no plans to continue that tour. Because, because of COVID? Because just as recently as last year, you had events scheduled in China. You had to ultimately cancel them because of COVID. But that doesn't sound to me like you suspended your business arrangements. I, I, would have, I would have to check the status of the contract, Senator, but it's my understanding we have no well, No, No, just wait a minute, though. This, this is important yeah. but because you told me just a minute ago when I talked about PJ Tour Series China – that that wasn't happening, that that, 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 was, that was gone. But now you're telling me something different. Now you're telling me that, oh, no, we still have the business arrangement. Actually, you're hemming and hawing on that. But you're saying we haven't done any events in China. Well, of course not, because of COVID restrictions. You haven't been allowed to. I'm trying to ascertain whether you still have this 20-year agreement with Chinese entities to do tour events in China. You had PGA Tour officials living in China in order to facilitate this. Do, do you see what I'm driving at? So, so my question is, does PGA Tour China, this entity that the tour owns based in Beijing for which you've signed a 20-year contract, do you, does it still exist? I can, I can tell you two things. One is I would have to check the status of the contract. I do not believe it's currently in force, but I would have to check that. And we'll, we'll be happy to get you information on that. The second thing I can tell you is that we haven't operated since 2019, and it's my understanding that we have mm -hmm. no plans to continue that series. As long as COVID exists or? or... Period. And why, why is that? Be, from a business standpoint, we're, we're, it, it, we're not going to continue that series in China. Okay. Here's, I, I think you can see what my concerns are, but just so that I'm absolutely crystal clear about it, here, here's my concern. Yes. My concern is that the communist government in China has systematically attempted to use and influence American sports organizations and lots of other entities, our media, entertainment industry, companies, lots of them. They're not shy about using leverage. And we we've used the term sports washing a lot today. I think it's applicable on this situation. And Senator Blumenthal referenced earlier the brutal crackdown in Hong Kong, which I had, I guess I'll call it the privilege. Uh, maybe it's um, the misfortune of seeing for myself firsthand on the streets there. And while that was going on, what was China doing? What was Beijing doing? They were applying maximal pressure on the NBA that had a lot of contracts very lucrative with China. The chairman mentioned Daryl Morey at the time, general manager of the Houston Rockets, who ventured the most, frankly, anodyne statement in support of the people of Hong Kong. I mean, it was, it was the most moderate little, I think it was a tweet. For this, he was blasted by NBA players, certainly by China, by owners, by his own owner. Ultimately, he resigned. So it worries me when I see the PGA doing business with the Chinese government, subjecting its players and this association that you've lauded so much today to those same pressures from a government that is brutal, that is repressive, and that is attempting to use American institutions as a megaphone for their own totalitarian, dystopian, and frankly evil policies. When you imprison millions of people in concentration camps for the purpose of eradicating their religious beliefs and killing them, and that's what they're doing with the Uyghurs, you're an evil regime.
When you treat your own people as slaves, and that's what they're doing, you are an evil regime. I don't want to see American institutions co-opted by that regime. That's where I'm coming from with this. Americans are being harmed or at risk. Uh, and, and because Liv and, and PGA have figured out, you know, a way to get along with each other and provide more uh, games, more tournaments for people, the question is who is the aggrieved party here on the basis of this merger? And, and I, I mean, obviously people who's, who had relatives or just people who are concerned about the safety of the nation when the Saudis are involved in anything have, have a decent concern. But as, as Chad said, you know, if you buy, or as the senator said, if you buy oil, you're helping the Saudis. Exactly. Look, I have a lot of respect for my former colleagues in the House and in the Senate, but come on. Really, with, with, the, with the appropriations bills having to come up, with the National Defense Authorization Act, with the Farm Bill, this is what you're going to spend time on? Look, I, my heart goes out to the 9-11 families, and I agree. But, where, okay, if we're going to start down this road, why don't we bring in uh, the Formula One t uh, teams? Why don't we bring in the tennis associations? Why don't we bring in the golf, uh, other uh, leagues that go to uh, for people who perform in, in Saudi Arabia? This is is just an issue. Look, I want Saudi Arabia held responsible for their human rights violations. But for Congress to spend time worrying about this deal, really, let's just be frank here. This is about time on camera, yes. talking about how yes. bad they don't like the, the Saudis. That's all yes. this is. It's a five-minute clip time for comms directors all over the hill. You know what?